about criticisms of the existing bill as opposed to um, where we might find agreement, I, I feel obliged just to go through a couple of the points that you raised. Um, just to go back to the original argument that Lamar and I had, and we've now chased around for quite some time. Look, if I'm uh, a self-employed person who right now can't get coverage or can only buy the equivalent of Acme insurance that I had for my car. So I have some sort of high deductible plan. It's basically not health insurance, it's house insurance. I, I'm going to, I'm buying that to protect me from some catastrophic situation, otherwise I'm just paying out of pocket. I don't go to the doctor, I don't get prevent, preventive care. There are a whole bunch of things I just do without. But if I get hit by a truck, maybe I don't go bankrupt. All right, so that's what I'm purchasing right now. What the Congressional Budget Office is saying is, is that I, if I now have the opportunity to actually buy a decent package inside the exchange that cost me about 10 to 13 percent more but is actually real insurance, then there are going to be a bunch of people who take advantage of that. So yes, I'm paying 10 to 13 percent more because instead of buying an apple, I'm getting an orange. They're two different things. Now, you, could, you can still, you still have an option of, no, no, let, let, let me finish. The, what, the, the way that this bill is structured uses a high cost pool, a catastrophic pool, for people who can't afford to buy that better insurance. But overall, for a basic package, which, by the way, is a lot less generous than we give ourselves in Congress. So, you know, I, I, I'm amused when people say, you know, let, let people have this not-so-good plan. Let, let have them have a high deductible. But there'd be a riot in Congress if we suddenly said, let's have Congress have a high deductible plan. Because we all think it's pretty important to provide coverage for our families. And the federal health insurance program has a minimum benefit that all of us take advantage of. And I haven't seen any Republicans or Democrats in Congress suddenly say, you know what, we should have more choices and uh, not have to uh, have this minimum benefit. So what we're basically saying is we're going to do the same thing for these other folks that we do for ourselves. On the taxpayer's dime, by the way. Now, uh, there is a legitimate philosophical difference around that. But I think it's just very important for us to remember that saying there's a baseline of coverage that people should be able to get if they're participating in this big pool is not some radical idea. And it's an idea that a lot of states, you know, we were talking earlier about what states do. A lot of states already do it. This, by the way, goes to the other uh, difference that we have when it comes to interstate purchase of, of insurance. Actually, this is a Republican idea, been championed by the Republicans. We actually agree with the idea that maybe if you get more regional markets and national markets as opposed to just state by state markets, you might get more choice and competition. People would be able to say, gosh, there's a great insurance company in, in uh, Nevada and I live in New York and maybe I can purchase it. That, that's actually something that we find attractive. So do you guys. But again, the one difference, as I understand it, and the reason you're not supporting the approach that we take, is what we say is there should be sort of a minimum baseline benefit, because if not, what ends up happening is you can have a company set up in Nevada. Let's assume there were no rules there. There are no protections for the woman who's got breast cancer. They go into New York. They... Uh, offer in pretty cheap insurance to everybody who's healthy. They don't offer the same insurance to people who aren't so healthy or have pre-existing conditions. They drain from New York all the healthy people who are getting cheaper rates, but now suddenly everybody left in New York who doesn't qualify for that cheaper plan uh, is in a pool that's sicker, older, and their premiums go up. 
So what we've said is, well, if we can set a baseline, then you can have interstate competition, but it's not a race to the bottom. Rather, everybody's got some, some basic uh, care. Now, these are legitimate arguments to have, but I, I just want to point out that uh, this, this issue of government regulation, and which we're going to also be talking about with respect to insurance, is very different than the way this has been framed uh, during the course of the debate over the last year, which is government takeover of insurance. This is not a government takeover of insurance. What it is, is saying, let's set up some baselines and then use market principles, the private sector, and pooling in order to make sure that people get a better deal. So, uh, Jim, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to move on to the next topic, but anybody who wants to pick up on what we've just talked about obviously can, can return to that as well. Uh, thank yeah. you very much, Mr. President, and Mr. President, uh, leaders and members of the Congress. Look, there are two cost containment issues that I think have not uh, been sufficiently vetted here today. And let me set this up by uh, sharing with you a conversation I had on yesterday uh, with the administrators of the Dillon or McLeod Healthcare Center in Dillon, South Carolina, a little town, Mr. President, you've become quite familiar with. <laughs> um, they told me uh, that their uh, emergency room activities have doubled uh, over the past several years. And they uh, were looking for some assistance uh, to expand uh, the size uh, of that emergency room. When I began to question them as to why in this small county, not in my district, uh, they had had such a doubling, uh, what it turns out is that uh, they told me that 31% of the people that they treat in that emergency room are not there for emergencies. They are there for primary care. Now they said to me that some of these people do not have health insurance. But many of them do have health insurance. But they cannot afford the $1,500 to $2,000 deductibles that they would have to pay if they were to go to a private primary care provider. So they are now treating people who've got employer-based health care that they cannot use. Uh, they're holding that for some catastrophic event, uh, but they need uh, some assistance. Now, I think uh, that no matter what kind of plan we develop, there will be many people left uncovered, and we need a safety net for those people. I believe that the one way to provide that safety net and to take care of all of those people who may be uncovered and those people who have $2,000 deductibles uh, with primary care is for a significant expansion of community health centers. And we have not spoken about that here today, but I know that your proposals, Mr. President, I know that both the House and Senate plans have that in them, uh, and I do believe that that is very, very important. We have more than a 40-year experience uh, with these uh, health care centers, and I do believe uh, that no matter what we do, uh, there ought to be a significant expansion uh, of those health care centers. Secondly, Mr. President, and I, a lot of other things have been said about what I have on this paper, but one other thing I would, uh, would like uh, to mention uh, and it has to do uh, with people who really uh, cannot uh, navigate the system. Uh, people who uh, work very hard, uh, they know uh, what they uh, need for themselves. Uh, but I was reminded of that when we talked about putting together uh, restaurant owners uh, who will design plans for their members. I would hope that when we start designing plans for the members of small businesses, let's keep in mind uh, that the employees of those small businesses are not negotiating these plans. Uh, they are at the mercy uh, of the small business owners. And the question is, 
whether or not the plans are sufficient uh, that they will not fall into the same category uh, that these people uh, with 